we have Claudia Steinberg to help as well, in case. Good evening. <laughs> um, I think we need this, this case okay. because I have a fantastic uh, uh, dinner and uh, I'm exhausted, tired and filled up with uh, fantastic food. And uh, <laughs> this <is> Perfect. <laughs> So uh, I will start with a few questions and we'll have time to take a few from the audience as well. Um, so when I heard that you were making a film called Transit, it was very striking because I didn't know of the book at the time, but the word transit seems very relevant to your entire body of work. It seems to be like the governing concept of your films in some way, but um, in reading some of the interviews you did at the time of the premiere, it seems like this is a book that you've actually known for a long time. So I'm wondering if, it's only, I think, recently been translated into English. So if you could maybe talk a little bit about your relationship to this book. Yeah, it's a book by an, a communistic female writer, Anna Segers, and it wasn't really uh, famous in Germany, in West part of Germany. It was very famous, it mu it's, uh, it's a must, uh, Read, must read in the East part. And I make bad jokes about sometimes when I go together with Harun Faroki, my friend and co-author in the first movies that we made together. Uh, we go by car, he has a BMW Cabriolet car without a roof. Yeah? And we go to our uh, football uh, match because we are on the same team. He's on the left defender and I'm a right offender. And uh, and during this uh, one hour uh, travel, I said to him, I made bad jokes about Anna Segers because I never read a book from Anna Segers. And he uh, stopped the car and shouted very uh, aggressively to me and said, this is a great writer. She's a great writer. And I have to write, uh, read at this weekend uh, two novels, uh, The Journey of the Death of the Dead Girls. Yeah, was the first one is a fantastic, fantastic novel and transit. And uh, on Monday I said to him, this is great. And so I started to read the whole work of uh, Anna Segers. And I understand something that Harun uh, for himself was a little bit like uh, Georg in transit. Also in the movie, it's a someone who is not only a refugee, who is someone who hasn't got any, any fundament. Yeah? He's a, he's a foundation. Fa foundation? Mm -hmm. yeah. Fundament? Uh, it's fantastic. When I came back here from uh, New York on Thursday um, in Boston, I can speak English and dream English perfectly. On this. <laughs> and I hope that my English dreams are better than my German dreams. So this was a book that you and Haroon, this is the first film that you actually made, um, I think, after his, uh, his death four, five years ago. And, um, but you had talked to him about adapting this book. He, this was a, a project that had been in the works for a while. And um, I'm just wondering if you can talk us through this process of, of adapting this book. I, I don't know if people, uh, I assume some people are familiar with the book, but many people are not. It is, for obvious reasons, different from um, the novel. Um, this, the treatment of time uh, is obviously very different, but there are also quite a lot of other changes. Um, and I'm just wondering if you can talk through the process of, adap of, of adaptation. Your last film, Phoenix, was also um, an adaptation. And I think, I wouldn't call them adaptations, but some of your earlier films refer to other movies. And, um, but this one, you're actually working with a, a literary text. Yep. I'm not, uh, not a big fan of uh, 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 big research and uh, and um, when I m make a decision to make a movie out of a subject or a book, I n never uh, read that book again. Uh, um, I, have a, I, to I have many things I said together uh, today in these interviews, and therefore I'm a little bit like a politician who said the same things again mm -hmm. and again. It's okay, none of them are I here. I feel ashamed so. about that. Mm -hmm. um, I try to, to make some variations, uh, not to feel asleep by myself. And um, I'm... I have read sometimes that Eisenstein and Rossellini, they have a, a six square meter bed at home yeah, for, uh, for, their, for their thinking and, and, and imagination of their new projects. And a little bit it's like, like mine, that I'm when I make the decision to make, a, for example, transi uh, transit, I never read that book again. I just lay in bed and uh, try to remember what I remember from this book and uh, from this remembrance. Remember it's the right word? Right, yes. <laughs> uh, 
from this remembrance, I, uh, I start to write the script. The first draft, uh, I, Harun was still alive, was a period picture, and uh, we read it together, the first draft of a treatment, and he said there were too many people killed at the beginning in Paris, but this was a big problem that in the book there was a razzia in Paris during the shooting. We can't realize the scenes in Paris. Yeah? The, the film was never shot in Paris um, because in Paris there was this terrorist, terrorism attack. Attacks? Terror, terrorist attack, yes. Terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so this is forbidden for us to, to make there some things with uniforms, machine guns. So, but um, Marseille it's a corrupt city and you can pay some people there. And I love uh, corrupt cities because there you have a mm, the possibility to survive because you can give money to some people. And um, so uh, this Arun said it was there were too many people um, died at the beginning. Then he died. Yeah, and uh, uh, it was too hard for me uh, to work on because so many of his hand, hand uh, writing. Handwritten notes. Yeah, this was too much for me. And so I started to make uh, two feature movies about police, uh, uh, things in Germany, which I like very much, and I met fantastic people. And then I have a, then I try to, to write again. I make a little uh, um, journey with my son. The he had seen Boyhood by uh, Richard uh, Linklater and tried to make a journey like uh, father and son in Boyhood with me yeah, in California. We are looking for the lake. We never found the lake. Um, but um, in this time I have written uh, in the night when he's sleeping, I uh, written the new script. And it was also a period picture. And in 29 Palms, I want to see, because I uh, remember the, uh, the Antonioni movie, I, um, I let the laptop in, in the car, in the car, and it left was, left uh, in it the car, was yes. 90 degrees Celsius, of I think 200 no, degrees Fahrenheit. 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 <laughs> I, I remember always here a, a rare window where this, where you can see the temperature. It was always Fahrenheit. I never, okay, and um, and uh, the 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 laptop burned there. Yeah, the. Um, and so everything was destroyed, and I was relieved because the period picture I'm not interested anymore. It's had I had made two period pictures before, and I never want to do it again. Yeah? It's uh, I can't see the costumes, and there's a bad, bad thing with German actors when they are in period pictures; they are talking like uh, uh, they are on stage, yeah? and not in a. <laughs> and this is this is a big problem. Yeah? So how did you conceptualize the sense of, of time of the film? I mean, you know, it's been described as a film that takes place both in the past and the present, but I think that kind of understates the, the complexity of what's actually going on. There's a sense of, of timelessness and um, a sense of occasional anachronism um, that emerges in, in different ways, sometimes visually, sometimes in, in the dialogue. Um, so can you talk about how you arrived at the sense of, of making a film that is, has all the trappings, that is very, in some ways, quite faithful to the plot of the Anna Zegers film, uh, book, but then also, it seems like there's a very, uh, it, it's, it's very controlled in terms of how you design the, the, the time too. When, when we have the premiere in Paris, there was the son of Anna Zegers in the audience. He is 92 years old and I was very nervous because yeah, when you, when you make a, a movie out of a book and, and al always the author or, uh, or relatives of the author is coming later to you and say, what have you done to the book of my mother? But he told us that uh, Anna Segos, he, he lived there in Marseille yeah, in 1942. He was three years or five years old. And um, he, sh he's, he said to me that Anna Segos each evening tell them stories from the Greece myths yeah, mm -hmm. about ports, uh, about the sea, about the, uh, about the um, relation between the land and the sea and the border lines, about transit, uh, 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 transit in, in geographical order, also transit in historical orders. Yeah? Yeah. It's okay what yeah. I'm talking? Uh, yeah. I'm not it's interfering perfect, with really. you. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's when perfect. I'm looking at you, I'm it's I'm perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. So it's getting better and better. And um, <laughs> so a little bit like this is you, you can find also in, um, in our conception to mm -hmm. of, uh, of transit that there is a transit between 
the land and the sea, the USA or Mexico and Europe, yeah? and also, but also a transit of, uh, of, of the periods, a pa transit of the past and the present. You must know that 1942, the people who are living there in Paris, uh, in, in, in Marseille and waiting for ships, yeah? they, most of them had to die yeah? because of the na Nazis are coming or committed suicide like Walter Benjamin. But the, the survivors, when they came back to West Germany, they create the constitution of our Western Germany society. Yeah? And uh, it, there's the paragraph 16, and the paragraph 16 means uh, it's about asylum, that everybody in the world who is uh, a refugee uh, in the reasons of uh, religion, sexuality, political things, uh, can have as asylum in, in Germany. This is the guilt, uh, uh, and um, they, this, uh, it's their experience. And we destroy this uh, paragraph 16 the last 20 years, yeah? the, like in all countries. I uh, heard something happen in the USA too in this direction. Or, uh, and um, so uh, there was also a, a, a relation between 1942 and, and contemporary. And so we have another transit too. Yeah. I, I, I think what's, for me, I think what's really brilliant about this concept is the is the sense that whenever you make a contemporary adaptation of something historical, you're always dealing with two time frames anyway. You're dealing with the time frame which, which is set and the time frame which when it's made. And I think this is a film that makes that, brings it to the surface in a way that, you know, I think other films, it's, it's more in, implicit. Um, but I, can you talk a little bit about just designing this, this film in terms of like having markers that suggest what time things are taking place in, because it's not like, uh, it, it's not aggressively modern either. No, no we, ch we changed not so much. Uh, the, o the only thing is my son, I talked about this boyhood son there uh, from, from California journey. He said to me, never make this movie with smartphones because <laughs> when, you make, when you use a smartphone, he, he for himself said, when he saw, uh, saw a movie from two th 2009 where you have the first generation for iPhone, for example, it's very, very old when you see that movie 2017 because the advertisement of Apple is so aggressive that you can, when you see an old, old iPhone, you have this old iPhone, you're uh, uh, it's antique. Yeah? <laughs> but when you see John Paul Bemondo, when he s uh, saw John Paul, Bem John Paul Bemondo in a movie by uh, Jean-Pierre Melville from 1962, and he's using an old telephone cell, Telephone cell, no, what's uh, the phone cell, cell, yes. To to yeah. Phone cell, and he has to use coins. I, for him, it's not a problem. So he said to me, no smartphones, no computers. Yeah? So the, the movie is uh, in, a, in, a, in a time lapse. Capsule. Or Caps yeah, capsule, yeah. yeah, like this. And this was a very good idea. And the only thing we, we, we have is uh, the passport uh, with the Deutsches Reich, mm -hmm. an old typewriter machine, some little things, but all the other things, in, uh, in Marseille there, we, we don't change anything. The hotel room is original, th th everything's original. And uh, so the only thing we do is a, a trick I've read in the Martin Scorsese diary or a Paul Schrader diary, that um, you we have, we have also no, what, extras, that's the mm -hmm. word in English? Extras, yeah. Extras, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We extras. just have four or five extras we have near the camera, so they don't look into the camera. And if the, the next people to the camera don't look into the camera, you have uh, the other uh, don't do that uh, the same. The normal people, the ordinary people who are t uh, going through the streets, have the cars. And also, I said it's a corrupt city. Uh, they don't. Uh, they are not interested in um, in art house movies because there is not so much money. Yeah. So I I want you to talk a little bit about the um, the narrator. Um, in the film. I don't really, uh, maybe I'm missing some, some films, but I don't really, I can't even really think of the use of voiceover in your other films. I don't know if you've, you've never used it. So this is the first. It was forbidden by Haroon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? He really? said, no, never, never, never narrator, never, never. Yeah? And then he shows me so many examples of bad movies uh -huh. with narrators. And uh, for example, all, and then I said, okay, this Billy Wilder thing, uh, this, is a uh, this is a black series, or what, what do you call uh, it? Uh, film noir. Film, the film noir, this is not our time. For me, it's, it was, uh, I 
the first 25 minutes so there is no narrator and yeah. in the moment when he uh, 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 is reading the first book in his life, the script, the narrator is coming and the narrator is also someone who is a who is a bad witness? You you can <laughs> you, yeah you unreliable yeah. yeah they are sitting the Marie and the Georg are sitting in this uh, restaurant, and uh, they're just touching their hands. And the narrator said uh, they're kissing each other. They, he's also a really bad witness. Policemen don't like so much. Yeah? And uh, so he's because he's a bad witness. He's a he's a person. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a he's a character. Yeah, and he's a bartender. And I and I remember that the bartenders. No, bartender's not the wrong word, huh? What's this no, right? That's the right word. That's, that's the right yep. word? Huh? Yeah. Bartender. Mm -hmm. Bar bartender. Yeah. Tender. Because Elvis Presley's song with tender is not the bartender, no, no. No, no, no. no. tenderness <laughs> too. Ten tender, bartender was the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, um, and and he's, he's there behind his desk, yeah? And he's looking to his all... Counter. His counter. His counter to all the refugees. And they're they are there, and th with their stories and the histories, and their their ballast, yeah. And he they they're lonely, and they're talking like all the lonely people in bars are talking. And he's he's a he's an oral memory yeah, for all these people, and so I can use him. And he's not the, the voiceover Harun hated so much. Yeah, it's uh, because the book is a first-person narrator, and also. In this one, it's it's a very unusual narrator because he's also like kind of inside the story and also outside at the same yeah, right. at the same time. Yeah, that's for, for example. The also, the the book, the literature by Anna Segas is also on on a on a journey on a transit because the the structure uh, it's very very uh, expressionism. Yeah, it's expressionistic. It expressionistic in in uh, in but. The the style it's very Faulkner Jim Thompson later the the early J Charles Wilford mm -hmm. uh, it's it's this uh, this talking uh, people yeah, who who wants to uh, who are very lonely who talk to you and they're liars and they want to, to they are guilty but they to talk so long that they are not guilty anymore yeah? this it's like this and when I when I said to to Franz Rogowski who's playing the Georg. I said to him, you have to look to to uh, Godard's uh, uh, um, Abu de Souffle. Mm. Yeah, this is mm. uh, this Breathless. is the character. Hmm? Breathless. Breathless. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but the but the original one, not not was with Richard Gere. Ah. And <laughs> uh, and um, uh, what what uh, what's uh, also an interesting movie uh, when I saw it again. But it no, it's another an another subject. Um, they have remakes in America, which doesn't which doesn't work. It's a fantastic. Uh, Program, yeah. For example, this Ch Claude Chabrol movie with this. Uh, no, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> great. We should. Yeah. 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 Um, so okay. So breathless. You had him. Yeah. You had. You had because France because it's also he's he's empty. Jean Paul Belmondo. He do, he's also from Paris to Marseille and back. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's uh, he's a body. He's a dancer. Yeah. He don't he don't have reflection. Yeah. And France was also a dancer, right? So he's. Yeah. He yeah France is also a dancer. He has never made. Uh, 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 um, school for for actors, yeah, because uh, they don't ta ta uh, take him because of his. Uh, I don't know what in English. It's well a cleft, 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 cleft. Yeah, cleft. Yeah. they don't because the German actor schools are uh, soldier schools. Yeah. <laughs> what? Military camps. Oh, military camps. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, can you talk a little bit about just this this character of um, of Georg and how you I think that that character is quite similar to, in outline to to what is in the book. But um, even though it's a male protagonist, which is unusual for you, not unprecedented, but unusual given the last last few films. But it also I think is a is is a figure who's very reminiscent of many of your protagonists. Um, this idea of like an M, you know somebody whose identity is fluid, somebody who only acquires an identity by adopting another one. Um, and this idea of a ghost, um, of a phantom, that is, I think, very present in a lot of your cinema, um, too. So I'm just wondering if you can talk about just shaping this 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 figure. I'm always interested in these sort of uh, empty protagonists in your films because they seem to. I've heard you like talk about like this this idea of being against identification, and against you know like just and I think it kind of resists that in a way by having these more 
opaque or more like kind of empty vessels. Okay, I, st I start with the thing that I remember when I was arrived uh, uh, this date I'm in together with Harun when he was a professor in Berkeley. The first, you know, first draft, the main character was a young boy. Yeah, and for me and Harun, it was a little bit autobiographic. A young boy uh, on the run uh, with no social friendships, with no social connections. Yeah? And a little bit, we feel a little bit like this in our, bo both in our biography. Yeah? And uh, so, but when we have written the first draft, it was a little bit boring because it's too biographical. Yeah? It's, it's too much from the. And so when we changed it to a, a young woman, everything changed. We are not part of this movie again. Uh, uh, we, are, we, have, we have a position, a relationship, but not, we are not part of it. Yeah? And uh, from this moment on, all, my, uh, all the main characters in my movies are female. Yeah? I read a fantastic quotation by Claude Chabrol that women don't live, they survive. Yeah? Uh, this therefore, he's always using female characters like Isabelle Père or Stéphane Autron, yeah? and uh, so and this was the first movie I made with a male s s character again, and I f for me it's a little bit autobiographical, therefore it's very hard for me to talk about um, Georg, because I've found so many things in him, in his uh, desperate seeking of to find identity, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, uh, and something to do with a with my own biography, but which I don't want to tell about now. B but I'm so exhausted. It could happen yeah, that I can tell everything. <laughs> this is the first time in my life that I mm, take to the, uh, tell the truth. Yeah. Out of exhaustion. <laughs> Out of exhaustion. This is it's like, like in a police sta uh, station. After 24 hours, <laughs> they're, they're I'm guilty. Okay. Yeah? Yeah? We'll keep the in interrogation the going. The bad, just just a few call. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I want to ask maybe one more, and then we can maybe take a couple of quick audience questions. Y I know that you, um, before you start shooting a film, you usually put together a list of uh, films, music, I don't know, whatever, like just a, a little uh, a reading, a, a, a list for your for yeah. your collaborators. And can you tell us what some of those were for this film? Yeah, uh, because Paula Bear um, asked me if I can find uh, movies where women are uh, walking through the night. Yeah? And this I like, a woman walking through the night. So I sit in front of my DVDs, a thousand DVDs at home like a real nerd. Yeah? And, um, and I, in this moment I can't find them. Yeah? And then I remember Jean Moreau in this... Uh, uh, escalator to elevator to the gallows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, escalator. <laughs> no, no, it, no, it's getting. No, I'm, I'm telling uh, not the truth. I'm telling <laughs> nonsense. Yeah? Um, so, and there's a, a, a sequence with the uh, Miles Davis music where she's walking through uh, mm -hmm. uh, through the, the night, the uh, Paris yeah. night. Yeah? And there, this was one of the movies we saw. Yeah? Then we saw. I make, I make, uh, we have a cinema at the roof of the hotel in Marseille, and each second, uh, uh, each second day, we have there a screening. Yeah? And I, I like that. Uh, the, uh, the screening has nothing to do with our movie. It's, uh, it's something to do with the movie for, it for cinema. It's something to do with cinema. And the, the theme of this um, ten movies we saw was New Hollywood. Yeah? We start with Mike Nichols, The Graduate. We saw What's Up, Doc, yeah? by Bogdanovich, Sidney Lumet, uh, Prince of the City. Yeah? And we are talking about cinema, but not about transit, fascism, Nazi, Nazi. But in all these movies, we... Uh, we we saw something. For example, the graduate. Yeah? There's nothing to do with this uh, with this movie transit. But Mike Nichols was born 1931 in Berlin. Yeah? His uh, uncle was Gustav Landauer, killed by uh, the pre-Nazi organization of uh, Freikorps. Yeah? And uh, he was a very fantastic theater agent and dramatic uh, uh, curator. And um, then he w w went to New York and uh, started to make two fantastic movies where the cinema was in a crisis, Who Was Afraid of Virginia Woolf and The Graduate. So we have something, what is happening in Germany, which and we have a movie of a refugee child, yeah? and, it c uh, and 
in, in this graduate there is something which is, which is not just a comedy or something like that. It's, 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 it's a f movie about a crisis in a crisis. Yeah? And so we have a little bit to do with transit, but it's not the subject of tr tr uh, transit. What's up, Doc, had something to do with the physical attraction of uh, Franz Rogowski. Yeah? <laughs> I think he's, he, he's a dancer uh, like uh, the people in the characters in uh, Who's Up, Doc, which, which is one of the best comedies I ever saw in my life. Yeah? The San Francisco thing with the glass, uh, and oh, it's just great, <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah? Actually, I have one more <laughs> question, <of a> <laughs> <laughs> just hearing you talk. Um, no, I, because um, I wanted maybe to hear you talk a little bit about um, uh, just melodrama, because in, in yeah. I, I do sense um, in your, in the trajectory of your work, a kind of um, a passage, a kind of drift I wouldn't say like away from realism ne necessarily, but a, a sense of a, a more elastic kind of realism that allows melodrama in. Um, you've always had a very interesting relationship with genre, um, but I think of your early films as more like being these sort of like crime movies, noir, and you've moved in the last few films towards melodrama, and in the last few films you've also moved into the past in some ways, and I'm wondering if that's connected. This I, I asked myself about that, but... Um I showed to Franz Rogowski, the actor, a movie which was made in 1932 in Berlin. It's called Menschen am Sonntag. Uh, humans people at on, people, on, people Sunday. on Sunday. People on Sunday. And it's made by Billy Wilder, Robert Siotmack, Detlef Sirk, D Douglas Sirk, and Ad Edgar Almer. Yeah? This movie is something to do as if the Nouvelle Vague or the neorealism -real is inve invented yeah, in this moment. One year later, the fascism is coming and destroy everything. Yeah? But these four who make this free, half documentary, love uh, story of working people on a, on a Sunday at the lake, Wannsee, these four went to the USA as refugees and they make their black stories, yeah? also here's uh, Serie ser ser Noir, yeah? and melodrams, both, uh, all, all four of them. And so I think I'm, um, we lost something between 33 and 45, not some, something, we lost so many things of telling stories, making pictures, and some, they, they find their, their studios in the, uh, these four, in, in, in the Hollywood, in the B-movies, in the melodrama, in also in, in comedies like The Apartment, which also a little bit very, very, I uh, think, hard and uh, very, very noir. And uh, for me, this was, uh, it's, it's, my, it's my education class. Yeah? I learned there, and for example, Fassbinder found later the movies of Douglas Sirk, and I found Fassbinder a generation later, and so there is a relationship between 1932 and uh, transit, and uh, it's, it's not a quotation or a retro thing, it's something um, like, a, like a hidden, lost tradition. Yeah. Okay, let's take, um, we can take a couple of very quick audience questions. Uh, so, yeah, with your hand. Yep. You, no, I'm behind this guy who is this. Yep. Hi. Um, you, I'm sorry to not ask about transit, but you recently were asked to give a list of some of your favorite films I from the past few years. I knew this years. was coming. Yes, and uh, you picked a really wonderful movie amidst things like Zama and Oslo, August 31st, called Den of Thieves. And I was just wondering uh, if you could talk about your admiration for that film. How many times have you been asked this today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is very, very funny because um, when, when I have to make this list, you know, everybody who has to make a list. For me, when someone said, uh, make a list of the best 10 soccer players ever or something like that, it destroys my whole week because I'm thinking and thinking and thinking. And, and, and so it's for nerds, it's, uh, it's, it's like suicide yeah, to make lists. And... Uh, and so I said, I want to uh, write down 10 movies which are directly in my head. Yeah? And this one, this movie, yeah? uh, everybody is talking about all the interviews today. Start with this question. What, yeah? This movie is great. It's not a joke. Yeah? It, it, it's, uh, it's one of the best movies I saw in the last years. And it's something to do that we have more festivals than cinemas in the world. That we have more 
movies with the subject, yeah, for example, the lemon tree between Gaza and Israel. Yeah? And there is a girl, Arabian girl, and the Israel boy, and they loved each other, and the lemon tree, and uh, something like that. Yeah? And all these subject movies I hate so much, yeah? they, because it, they are made for festivals. And I have this son, I have talked too much uh, this evening, he hates that. He hates that. Um, um, said to me once, uh, let's go to the cinema, just a cheap cinema with a parking lot directly here, Treptower Park, it's not far away from our apartment or flat, and we we'll go there with our bicycles inside the cinema and uh, look what, what is ten, there were ten uh, 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 hall, uh, screening, screening. screening rooms, and I said, this uh, uh, Criminal Squad was a German title, Criminal Squad. Yeah? And I said, uh, Butler, uh, okay, I heard about that. Let's go inside. Two and two hours and twenty minutes. Yeah? And this was a real, a real movie with people who have skill, who can work, who have tattoos and real tattoos, who can smoke, yeah? who, have, who can really smoke, and not not artists smoking. Yeah, they really they're, they're smokers. <laughs> yeah? They can shoot, yeah? and they have a plan, and they they have a. And it was a really uh, heist, 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 heist movie, yeah, which I, which I think it's it's movie making. Yeah, they don't want to to uh, to have a lemon tree in Gaza. They want to have money. Yeah, <laughs> and this uh, and, and and you can see that the movie itself has skill because uh, um, to make a movie had something to do with rob, rob a bank. Yeah, to have a, you have to create a team. You have to be. Find people who are loyal, yeah. So, and this is you can feel and see in that movie. You can see also the working class who is going down and the production, in industrial production work, which is disappeared. Yeah, but you can find the ruins of a fantastic industrial production worker class you can find in this movie. Yeah? And uh, so. I was there and I said to all my nerd friends in Berlin from the Berlin School, yeah, this is a great movie, they start laughing, they came back from in the next evening and the thumbs are up, two thumbs. Yeah? Yeah. And for me it's really a good movie. But everybody who uh, who's, who's see that list is talking about uh, Joachim Trier movie or the Lars von Trier movie, but this one they don't believe. But I can say this is a great movie. We're not showing Den of Thieves, but we're showing a few fil other films that you picked, which are great, including <laughs> things like <laughs> He Ran All the Way and Some Came Running. And All right, can we just have one final quick question about transit? Uh, uh, I'd like to talk about other movies, too. No, okay, no problem. But yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, you, he's coming back the next two days, and we can have many more opportunities. Uh, okay, right there. Yep, here. Yep. Hi. Um, first, thank you for... Uh, coming here in spite of your exhaustion. I'm a huge fan of your work, and I really enjoyed your film. Um, I, I just wanted to ask a question about um, m the character of Melissa, and I was wondering what was your thinking on making her uh, a deaf character and a character who had to communicate through her son? Um, if you could talk a little bit about that, that would be great. A good question, because I like this character very much, and also the actress, uh, who made everything very good with this uh, deaf, deaf things. Um, I, for every, for me, when I'm writing a script and I'm making a movie, I think uh, in Germany we call them supporting acts. It's a in, um, yeah, so supporting for me, ev all supporting acts must be so worth that we can make a movie with them 90 minutes or 100 minutes, with them as the main as the main characters. Ma main characters, yeah. And so um, I've written down a biography for her, for Melissa. It was that, that she's part of the Socialistic International in Spain, and uh, Heinz, her husband, yeah, the guy who's dying in the, in the train, was uh, she met him there, they are fighting against the Franco-fascism. He was hurt in, in the, uh, at his legs. She was working there at a nurse, at, uh, as a nurse, and they fell in love with each other. The death thing was that I think that uh, this, young, this young son she has, he has to do so many things. He has to, 
to um, to be not not on he, he cannot cannot be only a child. Yeah? He has also to be a husband. He has to to um, uh, translate everything for the for the mother. And so in that's it's it's something to do that in war times or in in like times like 1942, the children don't have a childhood, yeah? mm -hmm. and uh, they have to do so much. When when you see for example, this movie by Rossellini, Germania, Germania Anno Zero. And you see this 11-year-old uh, boy there, this blonde boy who's living in the ruins of Berlin. He has the body of an 11-year-old boy, but he has a face of a 30-year-old man. And this, this stolen childhood, yeah, this is you, you can see a little bit in this boy. He wants to be a child, yeah, but he has to be more adult as he could be. And so... This was the first reason. The second reason was that he has later he has to sing a song, yeah, and uh, but some there is someone Melissa who can't hear it, but he she can see him, and so she can see if he's lying or not. Yeah? And this was a very hard atmosphere for him to sing a song for someone who can't hear the words. Yeah, who, you you can't lie to him with words, but she can see in your uh, in his face if he's worth if he's responsible, if he can be a friend or a perhaps a father for this little son. Yeah? This is like a, a test, a really hard test. This therefore, we talked, I talked with the, uh, with the actress to make her death. Deaf? Deaf. 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 All right, that's okay, the answer? Yeah, that was good. I'm afraid we have to end here, but um, Christian's coming back to introduce Jericho in a few minutes, and he's also back on Saturday and Sunday, so please come back for more. Thank you so much. <laughs>